Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're looking at the bureaucratic theory of management by Max Weber. Now, bureaucracy is defined in the dictionary as a system for controlling or managing a country, company or organization that is operated by a large number of officials employed to follow rules carefully. Now, of course, these days, the word bureaucracy is often associated with negative connotations. But at the time bureaucratic theory was developed by Weber, it was designed to solve some pretty big problems with the way organisations were being run. Now, Max Weber was a German sociologist born in 1864, and that meant he entered adulthood at a time when industrialization meant how employees were organized was becoming increasingly important. So society was moving towards larger and larger organizations, from farms employing dozens of people to factories employing thousands of people. Now, Weber saw that organizing large groups of people like this presented new challenges, especially when it came to authority. Now, you've got to realize that at this time, most organizations were running based on what's called traditional authority, where how well you did was based on who you knew and not what you knew. Now, today we call this favoritism, but Weber called it particularism, where a particular group of people had disproportionate sway over the organization. And Weber saw that it was unlikely that this was the best way to run an organization. Now, because of the problems Weber saw with traditional authority, he favoured a more rational approach to running an organisation and helping it to achieve its goals. And there are two parts to Weber's bureaucratic theory. So the first is a clear organisational structure and the second is clear rules about decision making. So let's look at organisational structure first. Now, an organisational hierarchy defines how people are structured and fit within an organization. So for example, a typical company will have the CEO at the very top of the hierarchy, followed by the executive board, and each board member will then be responsible for managers who in turn will manage employees, etc. Now, Weber wanted each hierarchy to have what he called legal rational authority. And what that means is that defined authority sits with a position in the hierarchy, not with a person or an individual. So, for example, your subordinate would never be able to tell you what to do, even if they happen to be the son of the CEO, because their formal position in the hierarchy just doesn't hold that power. So basically, your authority comes from the position you hold in the hierarchy and nothing else. Now, point two, clear rules for decision making. Now, Weber referred to this as rational legal decision making rules. And that simply means that there should be a set of explicit rules and procedures defining how the organization functions and that these rules should be consistent with the rules and laws of wider society. Now, Weber identified six characteristics of a bureaucracy. So let's take a look at each of them in turn. So the first characteristic is a hierarchical management structure. And in fact, one of the hallmarks of a bureaucracy is this hierarchical management structure. In a hierarchy, each level within the organizational structure controls the level below, but is controlled by the level above. Now, power and authority are clearly and explicitly defined for each position within the hierarchy, and also job responsibilities and duties are also clearly defined for each and every position within the hierarchy. Now, the second characteristic of a bureaucracy is division of labor. And this means that tasks are divided between the employees of the organization. Each employee will be responsible for specific tasks and each department will be responsible for specific functional areas. So as an example of this, think about how your salary is set and paid within a large organization. So your salary is probably set by your line manager, but you'll be paid by the payroll department rather than the money being paid to your manager who will then give it to you. And there are some advantages to breaking things down in this way. So first, your manager is the person in the best position to set your salary 
as they're observing your performance daily and much more closely than the payroll department. Secondly, the payroll department are specialists in payroll and nothing else. And that's going to ensure that you get paid on the same day every week or the same day every month. And that's much more beneficial than just being paid ad hoc whenever your boss or a line manager remembers. So the third characteristic of a hierarchy is a formal selection process. So all employees are treated equally and are hired and promoted on the basis of qualifications, expertise, performance and experience. Now, there are formal rules and regulations to ensure this selection process isn't abused. So, for example, your manager can't hire someone simply because they're friends or they've met socially at the golf club. Uh, the fourth characteristic of a bureaucracy is career orientation. So the organization is career oriented, meaning that if you follow the rules and regulations and perform well, you will not be arbitrarily fired. In fact, if you perform well, you may even have the chance to be promoted or receive a pay rise. And in this way, the organization offers each employee the opportunity for a long-term career, provided they follow the rules and perform well. So the fifth characteristic of a bureaucracy is formal rules and regulations. And that means there are rules in place that govern how all employees should behave. Managers cannot simply appraise their employees according to their whims. Instead, they must assess employees according to the rules. So, for example, if you've been set a target to make 10 widgets and you make 10 widgets, then you've achieved your target. End of conversation. Your manager can simply decide retrospectively that you should have maybe made 15 widgets and then fire you for not making 15 widgets. The rules protect employees against this type of behaviour. And similarly, there are rules surrounding how we behave, treat and interact with other employees. And the final characteristic of a bureaucracy is impersonality. The rules are well defined and clear and are applied in the same way to everyone. The rules are there to prevent favouritism or nepotism. Now, if two employees were to enter into a relationship together whilst working in the same department, as often happens, then often one of them will be moved to a different department altogether or a different part of the organisation. And that's to avoid favouritism and help keep in-work relationships impersonal. Now, bureaucracies exist throughout the world and throughout society and the business world. And as an example of some bureaucracies, we have many in the public sector, such as many parts of government administration, the military, and almost all universities. In the private sector, we have businesses such as Coca-Cola, General Electric, and IBM, which are all structured in a bureaucratic fashion. Now, there are a number of advantages of bureaucracy, including efficiency. So within the hierarchy, everyone has a very specific job to perform. And this clear delineation of responsibility and specialization can lead to greater efficiency. So people are able to do their specific job faster and faster and faster as they get better at it. And another advantage of bureaucracy is predictability. So having a hierarchy, rules and procedures enables large organizations to cope with highly complex tasks. So it's almost impossible to imagine how something as complicated as manned space flight could happen and how a spacecraft could be constructed and sent into space successfully within an organization with no rules and no hierarchy. But, you know, having said that, there are some limitations to bureaucratic theory, including its inflexibility. So while the hierarchy and rules are there to encourage efficiency, they can be very slow to adapt to new situations or new information. It can lead to empire building. So it's not uncommon for people climbing through the hierarchy to try and maximize their personal power by having the biggest team possible for the purposes of self-promotion or appearing powerful and important. 
And another limitation is, of course, red tape. Now, bureaucracies are often associated with excessive red tape, whereby excessive structure, excessive rules and excessive processes slow tasks down and lead to frustration for the people trying to get things done to the best of their ability. So in summary, bureaucratic theory was developed by Max Weber to address some of the problems with traditional authority that were prevalent or be and becoming more important in Weber's day. And although the word bureaucracy has many negative associations these days, there are a number of advantages to having a bureaucratic structure within an organisation, including efficiencies, speed and predictability. So that's it for this lesson. Really hope you enjoyed it. And I look forward to speaking to you again soon.